Hi, this is a short video on how to use Transformatech's pre-built X12 message formats in IBM Integration Bus version 10. In this video, we're going to use Transformatech's 835X12 message set and also use an existing XSD representing a simple XML message that we're going to map to. We are then going to implement a simple message flow that reads an 835 input message from an MQQ, maps a couple fields from the 835 message to its corresponding XML field, and then finally I'll put the message to a file to a specified directory. We'll then deploy the message flow and run a test message through the interface. To get started we're going to go to the IBM integration toolkit. The first thing that we will do is show you the two message structures. First we'll look at Transformatech's X12 835 message set. We also have DFDL versions of these. If you're familiar with EDI X12, you will recognize the names of the segments and fields here. Now we'll go over and take a look at our XSD representing our XML structure. Here we have an integration library called EOB XML, and we'll go down and select the EOB XSD. Here on the right, you'll see the XML structure that this XSD is representing. So now let's get started with building our 835 to XML interface. To do this, we'll start by selecting New and choosing Message Flow. The first step is we need to create a container for this message flow. In our case, we'll select Application, and we'll name this Sample Application. We'll select our libraries that contain our XSD and 835 message set. We can now name our message flow. We'll name this message flow with a descriptive name, and click Finish. Now we are ready to add the necessary nodes to build our flow. We'll start first by dragging an MQ input and file output nodes. We'll then configure these nodes to use the appropriate queues and directories. First from the palette, we'll go to the MQ section, select MQ input, and put it onto our screen. We'll then scroll down to the file section of our palette, choose file output node, and then bring that over to the screen as well. For the MQ input, We'll click on it and go to Properties to configure the queue name, the queue manager that that queue is on, and set up the input message processing for our message set. In our case, we'll select MRM. We'll choose our X12835 message set. We'll select the message, and then select X12 for the physical format of this message. For the file output node, we'll select this and configure the directory and file name properties. For the directory, we'll go to our file system itself, select the output directory we want to place this file in, and then paste it right into the node property. Here, we will also hard code the XML name of the file, and we'll call it eob.xml. Just for your information, EOB stands for Explanation of Benefits, and that is what the 835x12 message represents. Please note, we can also configure this file name and directory dynamically within the message flow itself. And the last node that we will add is a compute node from the transformation section of the palette. Please note we could also use a mapping node to drag and drop the fields we want to use, or also use the .NET or Java compute nodes. In our example, we are going to show you how to write simple ESQL to map this message. We will now double click on this compute node where we will then add our ESQL match mapping logic. Here I just pasted in a few lines of code required for this mapping. This code is just for demonstration purposes. To make it more efficient we could use references for looping through large repeating messages. Here you will see we are determining how many transactions that are within our 835 message and then looping through to map two example fields in our case transaction type and an amount field. These mappings are usually documented as part of the requirements and analysis phase of your project. We will now save the ESQL we just wrote and go back to our main flow. Now that we have everything configured we just need to wire together our nodes and deploy our application. Now that we wired our nodes together We'll save this message flow and then go to Project and Clean to make sure that we get a fresh build of our project. We are now ready to deploy our application. To do this, 
In this example, we'll simply drag the message flow down to our execution group. Going through this process, it will automatically generate a bar file and deploy the entire application's content. Now that we have deployed our application, we're going to do one step before sending a test message to test our scenario. We're going to go down to the execution group, right click, and launch the debugger. We will then go to the beginning of the message flow, right click, and add a breakpoint. This will allow us to see the message as it comes in to our flow and step through to see whether our transformation logic is working. Now that we enable debugging and set our breakpoint, we are now ready to send a test message. We're going to use RFA to tell to send a test message to our 835.nq. Here, switching over to the data tab, you can see we already have a preloaded EDI X12835 message. Here, you can see that we have two transactions represented by the ST segment. Highlighted is this first one, and down below you'll see that we have a second transaction. If you recall from our scenario, we're mapping both the transaction type, which in this case is 835, and then the amount field in this second transaction, which is 186.00. We're going to switch back over to the main tab and then write to the 835.nq. We will now switch back over to our IBM integration toolkit and switch to the debug perspective. As you can see here, our debugger has captured the input message on the first breakpoint. We're going to expand this variable section in the top right corner by double clicking on it. Here you can see details about the message itself and any errors that are happening as we're stepping through our debug session. Here we see that we have an MRM message. We can expand this and see our X12 message set and how it's actually parsed the data. Here we can see that we have fields for the 835 transaction type that we're going to be mapping from as well as the amount field. We'll go back to our main debug session and step over our compute node which performs the transformation logic. Here now expanding variables again we'll see that our domain has been changed to XML NSC to represent our XML message. We can expand this and see our root EOB tab, see that we have two transactions and drill down into the transaction itself to see that we've mapped the 835 from the X12 message as well as the amount field over to this amount tag. Going back to the main debug session, we can now resume this so it writes it out to the directory. We now see that this debug session is terminated, meaning the message has been successfully processed through this flow, and we can now go and confirm in our directory if this file was successfully written out. We see that we have an EOB XML message, and we could double click it to see its context. And here you can see that we've successfully taken an EDI X12835 transaction and mapped it to this simple XML format. Thank you for watching our video on using Transforma Text Message Models in IBM Integration Bus version 10, where we just quickly implemented an end to end X12835 to XML scenario during this video. For more information, please visit us at www.transformatech.com or reach out to us at info at transformatech.com. You could also watch our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel here.